everyone and welcome back to the hybrid fans today with the second part of my lab building series or how i now call it flow skunkyard um as you wished on linkedin and other communities uh, um, i will uh, i will guide you through how i tend to build labs how i use my components what components i use to build my private labs for hci and arc and Today, I want to go with you through the hardware components I use. And to be honest, as I also don't have an endless amount of, of budget for those builds, I use a lot of consumer components. Uh, I use things laying around in my lab from previous projects. Um, so let us discuss a few things. I wish you would I already have what my current status is and then yep just move forward with that so i already showed you my nux so those i'm using so that's basically um the 11th gen driver bay core 7 nux from intel so the compute uh, the compute units. I, I choose them as an HCI node because of a few things. In the first place, they use the enterprise Intel chips, so the network chips, the not the V version, they use the LM version, which makes it a lot easier to work with them with their drivers. They have enough cores to experiment to run SDN and so on. Um, as you, as you can see, they have, yeah, they have eight cores, but it's enough for what I do in my lab. Um, I have up to 64 gig of memory in, I can add three NVMEs. And that's really a good one because the I use the Gen 10 one as my operating drive, and then have another two NVMEs connected for NVMe storage. That's not enough to be honest and that still will not be enough you can also add another controller card to add two more nvmes so there are enough pci lanes available still or i will show you later i will use a sata controller to add sata drives and what they also have is thunderbolt 4. so i can use the thunderbolt interface as network interfaces to then do uh, my storage traffic via Thunderbolt 4 um, as they now support network drivers with the original capital system Cosmos introduced wasn't uh, wasn't there wasn't a network driver for Thunderbolt but that was not public now it's a core component for the Thunderbolt to be used as network and you still can add more USB network interfaces, one gig, if you prefer or like. The two and a half gig is for me enough going full converged on one interface. I don't have any requirement for redundancy or so. So that's more than enough for my needs. And as I said, these two interfaces for storage are also fine. I can also, could also add a third node and daisy chain them. Would be good, but the this particular version is out of stock at most of the vendors as it is discontinued. Um, but if, if you get three, you can also then daisy chain like you do, like you do with the Azure Stack HCI switches configuration, which is perfectly fine. Um, then I will also add the third node as the Core i7 option is no longer available. I will most likely purchase the Core i9 at, at some point, but in this case, it will run Hyper-V, not HCI, because I need to have a domain controller and some other components to kickstart my HCI cluster. So that's why I will go for a single system with Core i9 running Hyper-V. Again, similar configuration with two NVMEs for storage and one NVME for my operating system. And then adding a few 
components so it's more, more or less the same components the core i9 here is a higher uh, has the same one of course but with the higher um core rate for the core itself but the, the rest is still the same and will function the same which is pretty okay for my use case so now those need to be connected to a daughter board um, and therefore i will use the gen 5 monster cove core, core board for one particular reason the first and it's just the connector i had the pre but the previous ones let me just uh they they already have been the previous ones the previous version which you can still purchase had a proprietary connector where you need to have a specialized um, power supply and you were not able to change that so as I broke my old ones, which I've got with the power supply, I now bought the newer version. And here you have a 24 pin standard PSU adapter, which enables you to use nearly every power supply and gives a much wider uh, option on power supplies to use instead of going with the proprietary ones. Um, I said that's my choice for the compute part. Then I will, as I already said, I will not add more NVMEs because I want to have more space. So I will use two NVMEs. I will add two NVMEs as my cache tier and add another four for um, my capacity tier. Yes, this controller has five ports, so I will maybe put another disk internally, but at the moment I'm planning for four drives and use a hot swappable disk bay on my uh, to put those drives in. For the drive itself, I will show you already a few things, uh, which are here on my desk and where we repurpose a few components from older systems I've built. Um, so that's basically what I will use. And you can also use HDDs if you still have some laying around. I have a lot of SSDs here, most likely one gig in capacity or one terabyte in capacity. So I will most likely use those consumer components. If they die, they die. They, they're not that expensive and it's easier to replace those than getting enterprise grade um, this, etc. I have also some laying around here on my desk enterprise grade, but not enough and getting additional four of those would just be too expensive for a skunk yard build. On a power supply perspective, I need to, uh, I will use two power supplies for three systems. So I will use a large one. In my case, I use the uh, Be Quiet Straight Power 11 one 1200 wattage because that one is here on my desk. I have that from another system with, where I will replace the power supply sooner or later to support the new um, GPU adapters. So I will use that one for the initial um, build as my power supply for the HCI nodes. And I will add most likely a smaller one not particularly from, from Be Quiet here. I simply tried to get one of the used market with 500 watt maybe for the Core i9, as that is my, definitely enough for that particular system. Uh, as I said, I'd also tend to use used parts for Skunk Yard builds because it's much cheaper and I don't have an endless budget for my test environments i'm spending a lot to be honest but it's it's still my private pocket and a lot of money going into those those experiments let me say it this way for a fan configuration i will use standard cpu fans janking them somehow together to push air through so i will go for a push configuration here like we have in a server pushing airflow in and hopefully have enough cooling so that that specific fan who needs normally a, a cooling shroud 
can get enough air into the CPUs to cool those. Um, I don't know what how it will look like at the end, but I think I will end up with the power supplies putting fresh air in and in addition having the uh, at least five fans pushing the air through the chassis and uh, ensuring proper airflow. From a switch perspective, I will use what I have. I think I will replace uh, my old Ubiquiti Dream Machine I currently have with a special edition, second edition one, and maybe use the older one as my switch. So it helps me to just travel around, have everything connected, and do not need to, and, and as it has the controller, etc., in. So that's my preferred option. But then I still have, so my current lab switch is the Enterprise XG24, which I also got used for a pretty good price, to be honest. Um, in Europe, I think it's 1,500 euro at the moment. I've got it for 1,000 euro on the used market. Um, perfectly capable to do what I want. It has 10 gig, but it's a bit overkill for that build. So I most likely will leave it in, in my lab or I have other ubiquity switches I then can move around and add maybe a 16 port 1 gig switch or I still have some kind of rocketized uh, 5 port somewhere in my in my spare parts which I will use but as a the dream machine is my preferred case as I just can take the dream machine put it somewhere together with the whole box and I have an autonomous running environment for uh, for my, for my use and it's it, it's it's perfect perfect or good enough for what I want to achieve, and that's basically all. So the components I already have. So you will you will need a lot of cables. So here's the Y splitter for the uh, power cable. Here is my um, some some extensions for uh, for the fans. As I already showed you, I have the power supply here, which is which is already available. I have two of my NUCs. I have already two of those daughter ports laying around. I have a few SSDs. The NVMEs are already in the systems. The controllers arrived today, together with uh, together with the with the disk base. And I have a box of fans behind me here, so. As you can see here, it's it's a pretty large box of uh, spare fans, which are collected from various systems. I will now use those to lay out the first design of my base plate, more or less. I would prefer to have printed, 3D printed somehow, but I would just use some wood I have laying around here to build the base plate. Uh, if someone wants to print those stuff and make it fine <laughs> or, or can offer some, some printer capacity, it would be nice. But at the moment, I will go for uh, wood I have here and build as a wooden box. Um, and then maybe in a later iteration, have some kind of other build components, which I can, then can use would be nice, but for the start, I will then go with the wooden version of that box. Yeah, that's basically all from me today and things I wanted to show you in this part. Next part would then be the layout of the board and maybe the, the first try build of the, the box itself and how I will work on that. That's all from my end. Have a great time and subscribe our channel if you want to see more of the Skunkyard series. And yep, have a great one. Bye.